What is going on, Jeff fans? Matt O'Leary back with another video. Today, I'm going to be getting into my recap of New York Jets training camp from earlier today. Sorry for the delay. Good reason for the delay. I was at training camp, so unfortunately, that then means I have to drive two and a half hours back to Long Island. So the video gets a little bit pushed back normally than I would like to. But again, wanted to just talk about what we saw at training camp today and shout out to everyone that I got to meet and talk to at training camp. I met a lot of, of really cool Jet fans there. It's so awesome to get to connect with people and you know just say hello, talk some Jets and that's that's why we do it. That's why I go to training camp and suffer through the traffic just to, to get there and watch practice. And I thought it was a really good practice, maybe biased because I was there and in attendance for it, but a spoiler, this was my favorite practice of the year so far, and a big reason for that, well, there's two. One, it went really long. They went well past 12.15. It was almost one o'clock by the time the practice was over, number one, so they, they practiced for a long time. We got to see a ton of things. And two, we saw dominance from both the defense and the offense at certain points of the practice. So how this started off, the New York Jets defense honestly looked like it was dominating the New York Jets. So how it works, they do their individual, well, they stretch as a team, they do that, then they break off in individual drills, and then they start 11 on 11s. Uh, they do that a couple drives or a couple series with that, and then they break off again, and then they come back and do drive the fields. And uh, in the early part, it was the defense that really was strong and dominated. And then at the end of practice in the drive the field, it was the offense that really came to life. Things to note early on, again, it was a slow start for the starting offense. Rodgers started just one of five passing. Really tight coverage and a lot of pressure. I noticed that not just for the Rodgers unit, Tyrod Taylor, same thing, and right down the pecking order. It was just the the defense was doing a really nice job with the uh, opposing offensive line and just in coverage as well. Um, so no Tyron Smith in today's practice. Uh, that did not mean uh, Olu Fashinu in with the ones at left tackle. We'll get to that in a second. It did mean, though, Max Mitchell came in playing with the ones. And, well, he struggled with Jermaine Johnson a little bit early on, wreaking havoc the first couple possessions. Um, he blew past him for what would have been a sack. Uh, he made a really nice play again. Was Gibson or Corley in the flat? I forgive me. I forget who the the check down was to, but Rogers checked it down and immediately Johnson wrapped him up and, and stuffed him for for a loss of a couple. So um, he he stood out as a major positive, uh, as well as the, again the, the coverage. I thought Sauce and DJ Reed and Chuck Clark are just some names that that stood out to me. As I mentioned, the final three drives, they did move the field. They looked really, really good for the offense. Aaron Rodgers, after starting one of five, finished 21 of 30 for three touchdowns. Um, and one of the incompletions was a Tyler Conklin drop. The other one was on a spike. He hit Garrett Wilson twice for touchdowns. Uh, one was kind of like right at the goal line in the red zone. The other was a, a bomb that he beat Brandon Eccles on. And then also Brees Hall on a wheel route. Kind of threw it as like a fade. Uh, Brees Hall beat uh, C.J. Mosley on it. And then it was ki kind of a fade. It, it was a wheel route, but it, it also kind of looked like a fade with the loft on the ball. Um, he had a step on C.J. Mosley and, uh, and Aaron Rodgers was able to hit him. But, you know, once again, the exciting part of this was that we saw two really strong performances, one from the offense and one from the defense. The defense just earlier on in practice and then the offense much you know, much later ended up settling in and having a nice day. I know people were turning and talking to me like, what are you, what are we, what's the deal? Are you going to rip them today? I'm like, no, I'm not going to rip them. I'm just going to say that you know the defense is good. And then I ended up talking, the storyline changed and I think it was the offense that ended up having a really good day as the defense finished practice by doing push-ups. My favorite part of the drive the field drill was that everyone was touching the ball. It wasn't like, yes, Garrett Wilson had a big day. He had two touchdowns and was a focal point of the offense. Like, go figure, Garrett Wilson was heavily involved. That's not, you know, breaking news to anyone, but it wasn't just him. Brees Hall rushing and in the passing attack. Braylon Allen rushing and in the passing attack. Tyler Conklin, Malachi Corley, Alan Lazard. It, it, they were really doing a good job of spreading the ball around. Like Xavier Gibson, another name that we can't forget. Like, what's exciting to me is it, it's not so much 
funneled through one guy. Well, yes, Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall, you notice that they are utilized a lot as they should be, but it's not all just them. Like in 2015, the last time the Jets had an awesome offense, their entire offense was Brandon Marshall and Eric Decker. I'm not like that's not going to be the case this year. Yes, Garrett Wilson's going to lead the team in in receiving, assuming health, but they're going to use Corley. They're going to use Lazard and Conklin and Ruckert when he's back healthy and you know everyone else in between. So it was good to see them move the ball around and actually have a productive day on offense. You know, Jets fans for for years, unfortunately, we've seen very unproductive offenses during our time. I'm sure if you've gone to practice over the years, you've seen some really bad practices where young quarterbacks like Mark Sanchez or Geno Smith or Sam Darnold or Zach Wilson struggled against a much better defense. But it's not really the case in the preseason. Well, yes, there's times where the defense looks good and wins either a day or a section of the practice, but having a quarterback who could actually like move the football with some relative consistency is is a really pleasant surprise. Not really surprised that Aaron Rodgers is doing it, but it's a nice change of pace from what we are used to from the New York Jets. Also, we got to talk about our guy, Olu Fashionu, first round pick of the New York Jets this year. Yesterday was the first time that they played him at right tackle. As I mentioned earlier in the show or hinted at earlier in the show, he did play with the uh, on the right side of the line today. Max Mitchell started at left tackle with the ones. You did not see Olu Fashionu at left tackle today. It was exclusively on the right side. He started practice with the twos. I thought it handled his business against names like Will, uh, Will McDonald. Um, you also had uh, Tech McKinley had a, had a sneaky productive day early on in practice. Not necessarily against Olu, but um, just in general, he, his presence was felt. And then with the number ones, like... The offense continued to move the ball up and down the field at will. I think he ended up holding up pretty strong against Jermaine Johnson and uh, Michael Clemens and Will McDonald rotating in. So um, I thought it was a really, really good day for, for Olu. One, because he was productive, but two, because he's playing a new position, right? Like left tackles his natural side, but he looks strong through two practices on the right side. And As I've said, God forbid, like I don't want Morgan Moses or Tyron Smith to be injured. There's a reason why the Jets brought in both those veterans. They're both really damn good football players. But having a guy like Olu who's just waiting there to get his opportunity, the guy's going to get on the field. When you have, you know, two tackles who are 33 years old and both of, you know, both those guys missed time last year, the chances that, you know, Olu's going to have to play not only, you know, left tackle, but potentially right tackle as well is probably pretty high. So, Having a guy like him be your swing tackle this year before taking over one of those spots permanently, it's I'm excited for him. I think all Jet fans should be. Aaron Rodgers was asked about playing in the preseason. He was uh, pretty dismissive of the idea and explained why he doesn't feel the need that he has to play. Preseason is not what it used to be. It's to see if young guys, once the lights go on and the pads go on and the tackling happens, if they can, if they can show up or if they don't. So I don't, what's there to gain? You know, just going out there and being back on the field in a situation where you could get hit. But with the way we get after our defense today, I think the next few days, a few times we go against them, I'm going to be worried about getting hit as well. I was thinking kind of more from, from, from the perspective of, you know, it's been obviously a year now. You got some new offensive line, you know, you, you guys. Just, just for you to have a, some, whether it's a series or two, for example. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. Yeah, preseason is it's not real football. I get it. I, I don't think we're going to see a lot of them now. I, I understand the concern that people have is, is there going to be rust? And I think if he does the uh, practices against uh, both Carolina and the New York Giants next week, they're going to utilize that almost as the preseason. And I, they held him out of the, the last one against Washington due to weather. And I, I think... Again, they're being careful with Rodgers because we know how much of this season rides on him. But um, at the same time, like this is a good opportunity for for him. And as he mentions, like the Jets kind of need these preseason games to evaluate the the back end of the roster. There's a lot of competition here for like wide receiver fighting for the sixth. Or, or are you going to carry six or seven receivers? Who are those guys? Uh, the linebacker room. Who's what's the battle for the fourth linebacker? 
um, you know, corner, the, the whole thing. There's defensive line. There's like 15 guys fighting for nine or 10 spots. It's, you know, the, the Jets need to do some evaluating as well. So if he feels comfortable just doing practices and then being game ready, you got to trust the Hall of Fame quarterback. Also, Robert Sala was naturally asked about Hassan Reddick. Here's what he had to say. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to elaborate any more than Joe did. Um, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to focus on the guys who are here. You're focused on those guys, Robert, but, I mean, is it, how do you avoid this being a distraction? It's not. I promise you it's not. You know, it's a, it's a great opportunity for the guys who are here. You know, we, we love our D-line. We love our depth, um, especially at the DM position. And guys like Will McDonald, uh, even Jermaine Johnson, uh, Tack McKinley's getting a lot of run. So is uh, Watts and McGregor and Clemens and uh, Jalen. So we, we've got a lot of really good depth at the defensive end position, and they're all taking advantage of the extra opportunities that they're getting because of it. Robert Sala does not feel that it is a distraction for the New York Jets. They don't welcome him with open arms when he comes back. It's, I think it's just, it's really frustrating. Um, you know, I said, I tweeted out that, you know, it's okay to hit the panic button now. And I do think something, you know, I do think he plays. I don't think he gets traded, but it's frustrating. And I think the the uneasiness right now from the fans is justified. I really, really, really don't understand the argument that some fans are making that the Jets don't need Hassan Redick. That's crazy uh, to me. They they do need him. Uh, I know he wasn't on the team last year, but last year's team had John Franklin Myers and Bryce Huff, who are no longer here. They also had Quentin Jefferson, who's no longer here. I know you, you're placing with Javon Kinlaw, but uh, point being, they... A lot's changed from the unit from last year to this year. And if suddenly you go from, you know, having, you know, J Jermaine Johnson and JFM and Bryce Huff and Will McDonald and, you know, Carl Lawson on and on and on you went last year to then it would be Jermaine Johnson, Will McDonald, then Michael Clemens as your three. Like, that's not how this Jets defense is built. They they need their closer and Hassan Reddick's been a perennial 10 sack season guy so they need him out there on the field at some point and we'll see how that situation transpires like again we could probably dedicate a whole nother video to that at some point but Robert Sal is not worried about it right now I'm uneasy about it I'm not gonna lie it's not great it's it would be a lot better if he was in camp but it's kind of at a wait and see on Hassan Reddick guys that'll do it for me in this one thank you for tuning in I'm Matt O'Leary and I'll catch you next time